The main event segment tonight saw the new bloodline take the ring as we awaited Roman Reigns. Lots of buzz on social media about the tag team belts in the hands of the Tongans tonight because they still have DIY side plates on. Well, it didn't take long in the main event segment for Roman Reigns to come out. And Roman was violent, man. The still stairs shots were intense. And yes, Roman Reigns had eyes on Solo. When he cleared the ring of him, well, he picked up the Unifala and it looked like he was going to put it on. But the bloodline would jump him, stop. Solo would walk away with it, but that wouldn't stop the OTC Roman Reigns beatdown. Which was absolutely incredible. The crowd. Look. Look at the crowd. The ones are to the sky. And OTC chants were super loud. Really. This is what WWE's wanted forever. And Roman is now in that position. Many congratulations and well deserved to him. The story tonight though. Solo Sokoa escaped. But how long can he keep running for? Still no Paul Heyman. That's an interesting development and still no talking from Roman yet either. This is Things You Might Have Missed from WWE Smackdown. Make sure you've hit the like button and if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. Cody Rhodes would start off the show tonight. Successful at SummerSlam, wanted to reveal who he wanted to face at Bash in Berlin. Before he could, the fake tribal chief Solo Sokoa would come to the ring demanding a rematch and Cody would say, nah nah. Cody interestingly revealing the fact that obviously Solo's actions at SummerSlam would end up with Jacob Fatu getting hurt. But Cody said, I beat you, you're at the back of the line. And of course then with a little help from Kevin Owens, the bloodline would be seen off and Cody Rhodes would reveal he wants to face Kevin at Bash in Berlin. And I really like the ideology here of Kevin Owens saying he doesn't deserve it. Look at his win-loss record. You know what? It adds a bit of prestige to the championship. It adds a little bit of spark to it that you have to be on a certain level. And Kevin doesn't feel he's on that level. And purely out of respect for the championship, he didn't want the match. Well, Cody was determined nonetheless and was going to go to the back and get the match made. More importantly, we had the return of the Banana Men tonight. That is a tick. But here's an interesting question. Kevin came back into the ring at Cody's request. Why did Kevin then pick up the steel chair? He stood there while Cody asked him for the match, holding the chair that he wasn't holding when he first got back in the ring. The bloodline, nowhere to be seen. Maybe teasing something? Another great layer to the story was obviously seeing them backstage with Nick Aldis and Nick Aldis revealing that he wanted to give Roman Reigns the next shot at the world title. So there's a little teaser, if you will, that WWE management are going to do Cody Roman 3 down the road. But of course, this would fire up Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, angry at everything Roman and the bloodline have put him through, actually then become passionate about the fact Roman should not get another shot at the title. Nick Aldis saw the spark. Nick made the match official. Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens at Bash in Berlin. You know what? A match just based on mutual respect and who's the better wrestler? I'm down for that. And this match is going to bang. Definitely not the only breaking news today. It's just before SmackDown, it was revealed that WWE are going to bring out a women's championship, starting it off with a tournament for WWE Speed. That's a great idea. Seeing the women get another championship is great. Something we wanted to see for a while, so I'm down for that. A promo package tonight for Giovanni Vinci. He has officially been found. Vinci is coming with that relentless drive to SmackDown. Obviously, we saw him drafted after the Imperium beatdown. We haven't seen him since. I think they tried to imply like he's been living life to the full. He's been skiing a lot. He's got stuck on a roundabout for a few months. We all know what that's like, I'm very sure. But nonetheless, this does seem to be a total rebrand of Vinci. Definitely got the similarities to his NXT persona and his solo persona at least. And of course, this is all about style. It's all about the character work here. And you know what? He crushed it in NXT. I'm sure he's going to show that range again and be successful on the main roster. The only criticism is I hope one day, doesn't have to be anytime soon, 
But I hope one day we don't forget about the Gunther Imperium beatdown of Vinci. Don't forget about it. So the news came out earlier this week from Fightful Select that this weekend is when Bobby Lashley's WWE contract expires. Tonight on the show, we'd see his former teammates, the Street Profits and B-Fab, still united as a team. There was a lot of people wondering if that would be the case. They were in a match tonight where basically it's two matches tonight for tag teams. And of course, the two winning teams face off next week. They faced off with A-Town Down Under. Not a typical A-Town Down Under finish. Instead, a very decisive victory for the Street Profits. Much deserve, and they would face the winner of the tag match later in the night next week. Tiffany Stratton was backstage trying to plan a celebration for Nia Jax winning the belt when, yes, girl, Pretty Deadly would show up and, of course, try and recruit Tiffany Stratton for Pretty Deadly the Musical. Oh, at least they got the taste, right? And, of course, Tiffany Stratton would walk off encountering Chelsea Green and Piper Niven in the wild. And definitely setting up some kind of tag match there. I'm okay with that. That sounds pretty decent. Talking of tag matches, though, get ready for some bangers. It is highly speculated and rumoured that the Lucha Brothers, Ray Phoenix and Penta, are heading to WWE. The now, I guess, soon-to-be former AEW stars apparently look likely to be heading there. And there's a lot of rumours as well that they won't be going to NXT, that they're straight to the main roster bound. And while we're talking about those kind of things, Ricky Starks as well. Today, Wrestling Observer Newsletter putting out there that once again, Ricky Starks could be heading to WWE. A lot of people right now seeing WWE as the place to be including the Incredible Hulk. That was a pretty cool cameo. I wish he could, like, you know, punch Austin Theory or something, you know. <laughs> he was shown moments before LA Knight would come to the ring and reveal that he hit it and quit it, which is a good thing because he nearly stacked it on the middle rope as he went to enter the ring tonight. But he did recover it very well. Santos Escobar would come out, and I really like this. Escobar saying that your title reign is nothing, and it's a prelude, basically, to him becoming United States champion. Even saying, with everyone saying, Escobar, C. Whoever thought of that, genuinely, give them a raise. That's a great little line. Well, Escobar would have a match with Andrade. The winner would become number one contender for LA Knight's United States Championship. With Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews equalising Angel and Berto. Got to get the names right. And then, of course, it would be Carmelo Hayes screwing Andrade, helping Escobar to pick up the win. Now, clearly what we've done there is get to Escobar LA Knight, which makes sense and give a reason for Andrade Carmelo Hayes 3. Lots of stuff advertised for next week's SmackDown, including Austin Theory getting Grayson Waller an unwanted match versus Kevin Owens. That should be funny. And Nia Jack's championship celebration will happen next week on SmackDown. All good things are worth waiting for as we keep reminding ourselves about the pretty deadly the musical. That's right. There was another tease for it tonight in their match as Pretty Deadly went one on one or two on two with DIY. And we may have to wait a little bit longer for the musical as DIY were successful tonight, which means next week DIY versus the Street Profits. I'm down for that. And how can I end tonight's video without saying happy birthday to Alexa Bliss? So happy birthday, Alexa. Honestly, I'm not even going to compare this to Raw because it is night and day. The Roman ending segment was absolutely brilliant. Definitely bump this up to a seven for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, hit the like button, share the video. See you next time. Peace!